Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 61 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10-minute weekly all things DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. And what we're going to talk to you about today is uh, Terraform with iOS XC with our guest Story. Story, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Sure, happy to. Yeah, I'm Story Dewees, and I'm a technical marketing engineer. So I'm focused on programmability and automation for enterprise networking. So very excited to be here today. I yeah, always get excited when when I hear Terraform, Matt, for some reason. <laughs> I know you do. And actually, this is really exciting. Um, I I'm, don't think I knew that that uh, we were putting effort into Terraform with iOS XE. So I'm really excited to see what uh, see what Story has to show. So Story, can you kind of introduce um, what we're, what we've been, what you've been working on, I should say, um, for the last, uh, I presume, few months? Yes, of course. Of course. Happy to. So I have a few slides here. First, I just want to talk a little bit about like why Terraform in general. Why is it important? So Terraform is a, a single tool that can be used to configure different network devices and applications. And so now we can use Terraform to support iOS XE and configure our our switches and routers. So this is one example here of how we can actually like use Terraform to configure all of these different things. So here I have an, an IPsec tunnel and we'll actually see how to configure this in a demo shortly. And um, we can already use Terraform to configure things in the public cloud. And we can use it for Cisco vManage for DNA Center. Um, but now the new provider that we have created, and it's just being now released, uh, we can also configure our iOS XE devices. Yeah, so um, that's a little bit about Terraform, why it's important. But now, what exactly is Terraform for those who don't know about it yet? So Terraform is, a, is an infrastructure as code uh, cloud native tooling. And it's built on top of the RESTConf API. And so this provider that we're currently releasing um, that's new, this is built on top of RESTConf. And so that means anything that you may have used RESTConf with before, uh, you can now use Terraform to make that configuration. So that's exciting because it's providing us an abstraction layer from having to A, use the RESTConf interface uh, directly, um, which is nice. And then for people who are used to using uh, Terraform for their infrastructure previously, um, and usually it was compute infrastructure for the most part, but now we can actually get it to actual networking, enterprise networking <laughs> infrastructure, which is crazy exciting. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love what they're doing also on the story side, you know, with, with iOS XC, they're, they're giving our customers and our partners options because mm -hmm. they, they have Ansible and, and you could get that today. Um, you, you could talk natively with RESTConf and they have Yank Suite. And then now they've built out Terraform um, provider to talk to your boxes. So they're giving you multiple options to automate, which is which is great, actually. Yeah, it's really exciting. So here are like a few examples of the different features that you can configure using Terraform. And these are just the, the top features that we already have examples for ready to go on GitHub. So as soon as you start using this new Terraform provider, you can you can use any of these. Um, and again, this was created imperatively. So that means we have full or 100 percent coverage over all features. So even though there may not be an example for what you may want to configure, uh, you can easily create that yourself using the, the correct REST comp payload. I was awesome. not going to expect you to say there would be full parity. I, I am very surprised by that. And actually, this makes it even more exciting than I was excited about previously. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so this is full coverage um, for uh, imperative features, and we'll be working on declarative uh, coming up soon. Yeah, so still more okay. to come. Oh, imperative feed versus, okay, I gotcha. All right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So not, okay, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I have a little bit of Terraform terminology too about just how this works and how it all kind of like fits together. So um, first there's a, an execution plan file and this is essentially where you keep everything that you need to make Terraform uh, get up and running. So this is written in HCL, HashiCorp uh, configuration language. It's really similar to JSON. And so it's stored in this .tf file. And now let's take a look at what this could actually look like. So here we have a Terraform file. Um, and then within that, we're using the Cisco DevNet iOS XE provider. And for the provider itself, so this is the device that we actually want to configure. We're defining like, okay, here's the device we're going to go to. And this is a plugin to make a collection of resources available. So 
once we have all these resources available, let's talk about those resources. What are they? In this particular example, we're just configuring a, a VLAN, so creating a new one, and then we're able to get that afterwards. And for all for all of our security snackers out there, this is a publicly available sandbox. So the the username and the password are part of the sandbox. You can go see it on DevNet. There's <laughs> you know there's there's no leakage here at all. <laughs> yes, thanks for that distinction. So are we going to see it in action story? Of course, yeah, I'm ready to do it. So just a few quick things on getting started. One prerequisite is you need to have RESTConf enabled on your device because it was built against the, the RESTConf API. And then you need to have a Terraform installed. So steps three and four here are optional, just if you want to see some, some examples about how to get started with, with Terraform. But now let's actually like dive into this demo because I think that's the, the most exciting piece of this. So here we're going to take a look at this uh, crypto IPsec tunnel and actually configure this piece of the, the topology that we see here. All right, so I'm currently logged into a 9300X switch here, so bright, shiny, new. And um, first of all, there are two main things that we need to configure for a crypto IPsec tunnel. First, we need all the crypto information, and then we need the tunnel itself. So let's take a look at our Terraform file. There are quite a few things going on here, but just want to go over them at, at a high level about what's what's going on. So here we're using the new uh, Cisco DevNet iOS XE provider, and this is the device that we'll be configuring. And there are a few different pieces that we need to actually configure on our device to get all the crypto set up properly. So we have our Ike v2 keyring, and for everything that we'll be using here, this is the, the name that we're giving to it. So we have our keyring. Our policy, again, same name here. Uh, we have our profile. A proposal here. And then for IPsec specifically, we have our transform set. And again, this is just all of the, the REST conf payload that's needed to actually make these configurations possible. So that's all the crypto that we have. The next piece is to actually configure the, the tunnel. So here we're going to call this tunnel 303. And this is a a brand new tunnel, we don't have it currently configured on our device, so we're gonna post it, or this is just the, the rest operation to create it new. Um, and again, we wanna associate this tunnel with uh, the crypto that we've just set up. So now before we actually like go into Terraform and apply this, let's take a look at our device and see what's currently going on there. So here, I just wanna see if there are any, any configurations um, with the name that we provided for crypto, no, nothing's configured yet, not until after we actually apply Terraform. Similarly, I'm gonna see if there's anything about the crypto session. So <clears throat> is this tunnel actually up and running yet? And we should get an error here because this tunnel doesn't even exist on our device. Yep, okay, exactly as expected. So now we can go in and, and actually apply this to our device and see the change. So I'll go ahead and turn on term on. So you can see when the change actually happens. Ooh, clever. <laughs> so I'm just going to initialize it, first of all, <clears throat> getting Terraform up and running on my device. So great, we've been successfully initialized. Next, we just run Terraform apply. I'm going to add this um, optional flag for auto approve, just to make it a little bit faster for this demo. So you can see a lot of cool stuff is happening. We have two resources that were added, so the crypto and the tunnel both. And we can see all the logs here about what's actually happening. So that's cool, awesome. Let's take a look at what's actually here. So first of all, do we have the tunnel? <laughs> Does it exist? Is it up and running? And you can see before we didn't have anything. We actually had an error because it didn't exist, but now we have this up and, and active tunnel. And similarly, we can go in and actually look to see what's configured in terms of the AWS Transit Gateway, BGP, everything. So all of this is, is also created and configured, and this is what makes it possible for this uh, crypto IPsec tunnel to be up and running and active and, and everything to, to work as expected. And that's all using Terraform. This is great because, it you know, a lot of the things that we try to do in, in automation is... Um, basically seamlessly integrating our different uh, branches whether you're running it on you're running on prem or you're running it in 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 the cloud and so being able to support terraform like this 
um, imagine standing up just, you know, a, a brand new branch and you want to connect it to your cloud. Um, you can have all of that part of your plan, all of that part of your Terraform um, configuration, and then boom, it's just, it just does it for you. And again, I'm, I'm super excited because it's Terraform. So yeah, you can tell. <laughs> you love Terraform. I do. Um, story, this was really great. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, so uh, sure. before we let you go, though, we always ask this of our, our guests for the first time they come on is, uh, what superpower would you choose and why? Oh, this is a great question. There are many superpowers that I would love to have. Um, but I think that the superpower that's sort of like at the top of my list is to speak all languages, just to be able to communicate with everyone, no matter where I go. I think that would be awesome. It's a new one. Yeah. Yes. It's a new one. <laughs> I would, would love that one. I was impressed when someone knows two languages, let alone five. Right? Exactly. So. That would be awesome superpower. They always seem worldly and smarter than me, which they are most times. <laughs> um, well, Story, thank, thank you for joining time. us. Yeah, and uh, Snackers, again, thank you for joining us for yet another episode of DevNet Snack Minute. We'll see you next time.